video by Popular Demand is all about marketing and it's sponsored by Skillshare. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. I'm growing cut flowers for sale in upstate New York, zone 4B. One of the most common questions that I get is how to market your flowers. Now, just to be clear, my business is still in its toddler stage, but I do have a background in marketing. So today I'm gonna to be telling you a few ways that I market my flowers, and I'm also gonna be answering just a couple of your questions. I received over 150 questions about marketing. So I'll have a second video dedicated to answering the rest of your questions or as many as I can. So when a larger business opens its doors, they typically have a PR team behind them. They do everything from send press releases to all of the newspapers and the television stations. They'll take out ads in the paper and they might even do a television commercial or two. Now, when you're a one woman show or a one man band, however you may be, there uh, things work a little bit different, but it doesn't mean you can't have the same effect. And that's what I'm trying to do here with Flower Hill Farm. Just to put things into perspective, I have a background in public relations. I currently work in public relations and communications. I do press releases, I do website, I do photography and video. So I have all of those skills coming into this game. And what I also have on top of that is 12 years in television. So I was on the receiving end of all those press releases, writing the stories about new businesses, and I've been on the sending end, both for school districts and local businesses. I've had a couple of businesses myself. I also help promote my local town and I've done farmer's markets in the past with my crochet goods. So I do have a lot of background in marketing in general. I'm definitely not an expert, but I play one on TV. I'm just kidding. I also have a degree from a communication school. So one of the first things that I wanted to stress and uh, let my potential customers know about was why. Why am I growing local flowers and why does that matter? So my number one marketing tool, the first thing that I do is educate. So I was sharing articles on all about why local flowers matter. The fact that 80% of the flowers in this country that are sold come from outside the borders of the United States and the fact that those flowers that are imported have chemicals all over them. So there are a lot of things that customers don't realize that are you know, in the floral industry that I think we should bring to light. So we're in the middle of a local flower movement. The trend now is to buy American made. These flowers are USA born. They're born in the USA, quite literally. So not only are you educating your customers, but you're also building that relationship with them and you're building a trust when you're letting them in on some industry secrets. Hey, did you know? And then they'll take that information and they'll tell a friend, did you know that 80% of the flowers sold here in this country were not even grown here in this country? It's definitely an interesting topic and I think it gets people talking about why local flowers matter. If you're interested in more about why local flowers matter, I suggest that you follow Deborah Prinzing, the Slow Flowers podcast. She's a huge advocate for American grown flowers all over this country and her podcast goes back to 2013, I think she started it. Uh, amazing resources, go all the way back, listen to the beginning and just make your way up to 2021. It might take you a few months, I'm still getting there myself, but priceless and invaluable information in every single one of her podcasts and you'll find some interesting people that you didn't even know existed in the world of flowers. One of the things that I did to educate people is to put a huge banner right in the middle of my website, why local flowers matter. And when you click on that link, it brings you to an article and that's informing them all about why local flowers matter. Okay, so now they know why local flowers matter, but why now should they buy them from you? Self-promotion is a huge tool that I use in marketing. And just because I don't have a PR team behind me doesn't mean I can't have the same results just by sending out a press release that you type up yourself, just a couple of paragraphs and a photo to your local newspapers, you can also do the same thing to your local television station. Usually a television station will have a catch-all news bin, like an email that you can send it, usually like news at xyz.com, and that will get filtered in and say you have an upcoming event, say you have a, a bouquet bar or uh, a farmer's market, something like that. Just let them know you're there. You could even reach out to your chamber of commerce, your local chamber, and see if they have any marketing tools for small businesses. If you're worried that you're not a strong writer or your photography skills are not up to snuff, then you could also outsource those. Consider trading services with someone that you know that is a good writer or a good photographer. Hey, invite them over, take some pictures, and give them a free bouquet for their time. You know, make that deal yourself. That's exactly what I did for my 
logo. My logo is so important. And I traded services for that logo with an amazing graphic designer. Her name is Sarah from the Adirondack Inc. And in exchange for her services, I went to her studio and did some professional photography. And I'm also gonna be doing a photo shoot with her beautiful little daughter in the flowers come spring. I'm very much looking forward to it. A lot of people asking, well, I don't have any pictures of my flowers yet. How am I supposed to let people know that I'm here? And I'm gonna let you know what I did my first year. I didn't advertise it. I waited until I had bouquets ready to sell. I posted them on Facebook. I posted them on social media. And that's when I was able to get the content because that's when my flowers were in your face, ready to sell. Because I was not comfortable, and you can go ahead and do this if you want to, I was not comfortable using someone else's photo advertising something that I was going to be selling. It's not like I'm selling a product like a soap or a lotion that's gonna be given to me and then I'm gonna sell it. It's something that I'm growing. I didn't want anyone else's picture to represent my work. So my first year I waited until I had my flowers in bloom and then I used those flowers to take as many photos from as many angles as I could. And that's what I used all winter long to promote the upcoming season. And don't be afraid to just use your logo in place of a photo when advertising what you're going to have. It might not be as eye-catching or as in your face as a bouquet of flowers, but it's a way to get people to start recognizing your logo and your business name in a convenient and organic way because you're using it in place of a picture that you don't have, but now people are gonna start to recognize your image. So obviously some of the best tools you can use are social media platforms. And in some cases, a website. These can be your most powerful tools to present your products and your brand and your image the way you want to, to your potential customers. The two main platforms that I use are Facebook and Instagram. I would say Facebook is the platform where I get the most customer base. My Instagram is mostly made up of other flower growers around the world. So most of my customers are following my Facebook page. A lot of you ask me if YouTube has been a valuable asset to my business, but you have to remember, I only had a couple of hundred followers throughout the season. It wasn't until the fall that my channel started to really pick up. So far, I have not seen any sort of impact with my sales of my flowers, but I do know that many of my CSA members and my customers, my repeat customers, watch all of my videos because they love to see the process. I'm giving them the best behind the scenes look at how something is made because they're watching these flowers go from seed to base. My website, so my website is through Squarespace. I think a website is very important. This was a conversation actually on the Flower Farmers page the other day, do I need a website to sell? No, you don't need a website to sell, but I think a website is super important. Plus, I have a large customer base that doesn't have social media, and I don't want to exclude them from anything that's going on at the farm just because they don't have Facebook or Instagram. So for me, the website is a one-stop shop. I have all of my merchandise on there. I have all my photos on there. They literally can log on and buy a bouquet from me. I use it to sell my CSAs. I use it to sell my Flower Hill Farm merchandise. I use it to sell gift cards. And it keeps the noise of all the Facebook messages and the DMs down because when someone needs something from me, they know, okay, go to flowerhillfarmny.com and that's where you place your order. It gets to be a lot when you're in the middle of a busy harvest season and you're getting DMs asking for custom bouquets. If they're all filtering in through the website, it's much more convenient to keep track of. I also have used it to build my email list. Now that might not mean anything to you. You might not need to build an email list, but no, there are other platforms that you can use to build email lists. The other thing that I love about my website is that it can take PayPal and credit cards, so people have an option. So now I wanna quickly chat with you guys about today's sponsor. It's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes. I am not exaggerating when I tell you that every single day I get messages from you guys asking me how to promote your small business, how to create a logo, how to do pictures of your flowers, even how to start a YouTube channel. Well, Skillshare is a place where you can find all of those answers and more. They even have flower arranging classes and flower crown tutorials. So I was checking it out and I just finished this class on how to brand your business on Instagram with Tyler J. McCall. He was going over such solid advice. I learned so much even in the first couple of minutes. He was talking about platforms and things to use for business that I had never heard of before. Here's the best part. 
the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you to Skillshare for offering this amazing opportunity to all of my flower friends. So if you're interested, go ahead and click the link below. It's in the description. So on to one of the ways that I grow my reach on social media, and you might have noticed, it's something I like to call a giveaway. Giveaways are super effective on social media. It's also one of my favorite things to do. I love to give gifts. It's probably my favorite thing to do. Maybe that's why I love like giving flowers so much and the reaction of people when they see these beautiful things. So anyway, it's one of my favorite things to do. So a giveaway does several things for you. It can organically grow your reach because people are excited to win something. So I've given away things like gift cards, the first bouquet of the year. I've even given away a peony root. I've also done seedling sale giveaways. So I would give away like six six of my best seedlings to the winner of this giveaway. So it gets people really excited about winning something. So you make sure you tell them like, like, comment, and share. Just by doing those things, it puts your page into the eyes or into the news feed of thousands of new people who may have never seen your stuff before. And all of those people are potential new customers. You may have noticed a lot of businesses do this as a tactic, and that's because it works. Plus, people love to get free things, let's be honest. Another thing that you can do, and, and this is something I personally have not done, but I just came up with this idea and I think it's a really good <laughs> tactic, but we all have that one friend who posts every part of their life on social media, right? And you don't hate it, you love it. You see, okay, you had that for lunch, you had this for dinner, you went there for shopping, okay, great, we love you. Drop off some flowers at their house. <laughs> They'll take pictures of them and they will be posting them on their social media. Make sure they take good pictures though, make sure. Okay, so I've talked about education, I've talked about self-promotion, I've talked about social media and websites, I've talked about giveaways. Um, now let's get to a couple of questions because I feel like this video might be getting a little long. So Nestled Together is asking how I marketed the doorstep deliveries. Okay, so back in last March when uh, quarantine first started, I did something called doorstep daffodils. So I marketed that by using a program called Adobe Spark. I created a graphic, basically like a digital poster. So I used a photo of mine that was the daffodils that I was going to be delivering. And I used the photo and used some pretty graphics and I put all the information on it and I posted that on my social media. And I shared it to my personal page as well because at that point I was still growing the business, which you're always growing the business, but it was still pretty new. It was the first time I was doing any sort of delivering. So I encouraged my friends to help me share and spread the word. And I sold out within 48 hours. I think I can't remember exactly how many I had, but I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stems and I delivered them all over the course of about two weeks. So Adobe Spark is something I was thinking about showing you guys a tutorial on. It's fairly user friendly, um, but let me know if you guys want to see that. It's what I use to create the graphics for my promotions but I did not uh, pay for any advertising for that. I simply just posted that flyer on my socials. Okay, Slip and Home, Slip on Home asks how I marketed my CSAs. It was very similar. So I created another digital flyer to market my CSAs. I used pictures of my bouquets from the year before and I told people what it entailed right on the flyer and then I shared it to my socials and had my friends share it. I had marketed it the fall before and I only sold one. I think I did it at a Christmas sale. I sold one CSA my first year. So, well, my first attempt at selling. And then they sold out for the following Mother's Day. So I had 18 CSA members, uh, literally went to bed with like two or three, woke up with 18 sales on my website. I learned a lesson from that. <laughs> um, I didn't put a maximum. I didn't put like a quantity of sales because uh, you can make something infinity on your website, meaning you can take as many orders as you want, or you can mark something as like limited supply and only say there's five. So uh, lesson learned, I woke up and I had 18 CSA members. So, but that's how I did it. I made the Adobe Spark digital graphic, digital poster, and posted that on 
uh, my socials and it kind of took off from there. So this season, I marketed my uh, CSAs very similarly. Did a couple of coming up sales, like, hey guys, this is happening on Black Friday. And then I did another reminder like two days before and then a reminder the morning of, you know, the sales open at noon. So I reserved about 30% of my CSAs for Mother's Day sales because I know a lot of people like to give those as gifts. So I will be doing something similar and that's when I was gonna take, take, take you guys along with me as I create my Mother's Day CSA flyer. So actually a number of people asked how I market my bouquet bars. Okay, so this was done a little bit differently. I didn't make flyers for my bouquet bars. That's something I might do this year though, at least for the first one. But I did do some live videos. So I would initially take a picture of all of the flowers that I had. I usually had a porch full of flowers, not even kidding. Like Lowe's buckets lined up, which I've gotta get those out of here this year. I don't want any Lowe's buckets on my porch. I just want the sleek black buckets. But I would post a picture of the buckets and buckets of flowers that I had and said, hey guys, who wants to build a bouquet? Something to, along those lines. And I posted all over my socials. Instagram, it didn't really have uh, traffic, but on my Facebook page, I would create an event. So I did a lot of live Facebook videos. So I would pop on there and say, hey guys, in an hour, I'm gonna be opening up the porch to bouquet bar sales. Here's what we have. And I kind of like show my phone around at all the bunches of flowers. And then people would get excited, like, see you soon, on my way, you know, stuff like that. Cause I had people coming from a couple of hours away. There was one time when I had a ton of flowers that I was nervous that I wasn't gonna get enough customers. So I did take out a $10 Facebook ad and that was like four or five days before. And just by spending that $10, my event was shown to about 2000 more people than it would normally. So in a related question, Katie Sloan Martin asks how I prepared for the bouquet bar and how I knew how many people were coming. Well, I didn't, I didn't Katie. <laughs> so I did create those Facebook events though. So you on Facebook, you can create an event. So I would create the bouquet bar, put the date and the time, and then I would be able to tell how many people were interested because when you have a, a, an event, you can click interested or going. So I would be able to tell how many people were interested and then how many people confirmed that they were actually were coming. And I kind of picked a number somewhere in the middle, uh, but I couldn't really do much of anything other than have as many flowers as I had. It's not like I could magically poof more flowers into existence that didn't um, already exist on my farm. So uh, there really wasn't anything I would do differently if five people showed up or if 50 people showed up. Okay, if 50 people showed up, I'd probably run out into the fields and cut more stuff, but <laughs> no. The way that I would prepare though for the bar itself was I always had to make sure that I had cash for change because a lot of people pay in cash. I accept PayPal, Venmo, cash, checks, local checks. I know these people. These are my, these are my people. So I also accepted credit cards. So I have a square reader, but I also have a credit card platform on my website where you can just pop on and I have a bouquet already there. So if it, you know, I can change the price of, if it's a 15, 20, $25, $50 bouquet, I can, um, I can actually on the spot, just add something to my website if I wanted to. So it's super convenient. Okay, so there's obviously the job of harvesting and prepping all the flowers, which basically consists of harvesting them and then cleaning up their stems, get them ready to go in the bouquet. So stripping all the leaves and cutting off all the side stems and stuff like that, which I would say took, I mean, sometimes I could be harvesting for three or four hours and then it would take me another two hours to strip the stems and stuff. But if you're doing it properly, you should be stripping the stems while you're in the field so you don't have to worry about that once you get back on the porch. So the buckets I usually would keep in my breezeway, ready to go with the flowers. It stays cool in there um, in the evening, so I didn't worry about them. I did have some buckets of flowers that I would keep in the refrigerator. And then the next morning, about an hour and a half before the bouquet bar was supposed to start, I'd pull all that stuff up on the porch and I'd make sure that my price um, chalkboard was ready to go. I Once I set it once, I didn't really have to make any changes unless I had some stems that were new for the week, like if I had dahlias and I didn't have them the week before, I'd have to add that to the price chart. And then about 10 minutes before the bouquet bar was about to start, I'd hop on socials again, show everybody what's going on. Hey guys, we're about to get underway here on the porch at Flower Hill Farm, come join me. 
blah, 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 blah. Even from the very first one, I had a great turnout. Um, I got actually nervous a few times because we are in a pandemic and there were people waiting on my lawn to come up on the porch because we were only allowing a couple of customers up on the porch at once. But people were super nice and, and gracious and waited their turn and had no problems doing that. They were able to chat to each other from a distance. So I'm hoping things will kind of um, somewhat be a little bit better this summer. I know things are a lot better when we're able to be outside. I'm just looking forward to being outside again <laughs> so that I can actually like see people. Okay, so those are all the questions that I have time for right now. I am going to be looking at the rest of the questions that you guys submitted and hopefully get that video to you hopefully within the next couple of days. So like I said, I am not an expert in marketing, but this is how I've marketed my farm and I think I've had pretty good success so far. It's been good. It's been fun. It's been successful. I wouldn't change anything. I honestly wouldn't. So anyway, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you soon. It looks awful. Oh God. I'm a little angry right now at my microwave because I was just warming up this coffee and when it was done, it beeped and said my food was ready. It's not food, it's life. <laughs> Ladies, you did to stop. Stop it, Willow. Good girl. Coconut cream, really good. I look ill, guys. Look at me. I look ill. It was a.